Liverpool's a tough place to crack, let me tell you. I've been West Midlands, London. Uh, there's different parts of the country where you'll people will jump on you, but let's look at it this way, Billy. To a lot of people out there, don't give a shit who they are, I'm still a drug dealer because yeah. I used to be a drug dealer, and that's the stigma. We're always going to have like someone coming out for fraud who's being involved in a fraud case. Yeah. They're going to come out and set a social enterprise up, but then who's going to give you the money because it's always going to be looking at you. I'm a drug dealer. I'm a fraudster. I'm a robber. Why should anyone give it to you? The, you know, I, I, and look, I'm five years out now. And to be honest, I've proved a lot of people wrong, but I'm in it to get people a better life, not in it to prove people right or wrong. Yeah. I'll always prove people right or wrong. You will. Everyone will. But it's these people who are just taking the piss and blatantly putting bums on seats. Yeah. And just not having pr- progression for people, that's what gets on my nerves. If, you, if you're offering jobs, offer jobs. If you're yeah. offering some sort of um, certification to get into other jobs, then then so be it. When I was doing uh, the cigarettes, um, I was working with uh, a guy. He ended up turning out to be a grass anyway. But working with him, um, he'd set me up. He'd set me up to um, Manchester Airport to pick a couple of people up. And I ended up picking them people up and it started where that was the very first time my face was ever seen and it was at Manchester Airport. But the two people, I took them to the hotel, uh, looked after them, he didn't turn up for two days. So I knew there was something fishy and I knew he was he was robbing, he was robbing stock off every wagon that was coming in and I was saying to them, you, you, you can't be doing that. I said, that one day is going to come on top for you. And I didn't know the people who had met anyway. And then a few weeks later, I got a phone call. And they wanted me to go over and see them. Now, <clears throat> I was talk- I talked to Robbie about it. <laughs> and I said to Robbie, look, there's, there's two ways that that's, that's going to happen. I said, I'll get ironed out over there. Or it'll be an opportunity that we can't really turn down. It'll probably sort of put us on a, on a good path to earning some good money. And he was going, nah, Bertie, you shouldn't do it. <laughs> and I had to sleep on it and I phoned him back the next day. I went, you know what, I'm coming. And I ended up going on my own. Um, I got picked up in... Um, was you shitting yourself, John? There was part of me, look, Billy, if if you've grew up like us, there's part of you that you're not really asked. Yeah. But there's part of you that... <laughs> Arrasked. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're thinking, look, if I, if I don't make this decision, you make decisions on, on your head... I, I thought about the situation. I thought about my time when I spent with two of them. And yeah. I thought, you know what? I think I feel confident enough to go. Half eight the next morning, I get rushed out of bed, get yeah. put in the back of an uh, X5 <laughs> and get flown into the city. And they put me in a big hotel there. Everything was paid for. And the manager come over. He went, look, um, I know your name, John, uh, blah, blah, blah. Anything you need, you're in the presidential suite. He said, you can have anything you want, so I'll pay for. I went, all right, sounds three days I was there without any contact or anything so what do you, what do you do what do you think you just your head's going a million miles the an hour. Kicking yeah in. yeah and you're ordering all kinds of foods and the last meal and yeah, everything yeah but you're going out and you're going out to places where you've, you, you you don't know where you are there because out, outside the motels and stuff on the streets are just nuts yeah. and I um, stayed there for three days and then they come back for me and um, sat down with them and um, Done a, done a big deal with them and uh, they went to give me ten, uh, five grand and took me in the um, Cartier shop and bought me and my missus a brand new Cartier each and went that's for you and give that to your missus.